we, I, I mean, I uh, think that. You may not be the best fit for our camera. Is your mother breaking up with me? We want the ring back. Oh. Give it back. Give it back. You should try again. You're running out of time. Finish, Crow. She's a lesbian. You don't know yet who you are or what you want. You really want a cheeseburger right now. I know that. Don't worry, I have a son and he likes older women. I have arranged for you to go out with Dr. Asset's son tomorrow. It's Lynn's protest tomorrow, Mom. I can't. Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Patriarchy has got you! Go, hey, hey! I'm Alex. Here's my card. Oh, card. It's really 90s. I grew up in Orange County, but my parents are from Iran. You know, the super peaceful country in the Middle East, never in the news. I've heard of it. He's this free-spirited artist who's funny and gentle and sensitive and progressive. I'm from a family of fascists, so we're going to Mussolini him out of my life. You're not going to die. Oh, yes, I will. She might. Oh, yes, I will. 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 Did you meet Steven and realize you were gay? Or were you feeling unfulfilled with Maggie and then you realize you were gay? Wow. I'm just trying to understand how it all happens. Uh, Alex, congratulations. I hear you're a doctor. No, I'm glad you would. He's actually an artist. My mom's going to want to drink a bottle of the best tequila with you until you have to put her to bed. My mom's going to want to make you feel super inadequate in everything you do or will ever do. Love is about sacrifice, understanding, and forgiveness. Do you think our families are too different? I want you to be happy. Yeah, he makes art out of balloons. I didn't follow that. Hey, he's really excited to meet your family. We have with us uh, Sara Zandia and Tara Grami, uh, respectively directed and uh, start in that movie, A Simple Wedding. We just saw the trailer, which uh, brings us to my first question. Um, tell us about this movie, how it came to be, and why do we have to need this movie out there right now? Yeah, um, well, thank you for having us, first of all. We of love Google. We love Google. We love Google. Use it all the time. This is so exciting. Um, the movie was originally called Google, but then. <laughs> a simple Google. A simple Google. I wanted to make a romantic comedy that reflected my world, the people in my world, my friends, my family. Um, so I knew I wanted to do something kind of personal, um, but within a popular genre, like the romantic comedy. So it started from like a very personal story um, that then sort of evolved into something very different than me. Um, I started, my family is very multicultural, like we're Iranian, but um, we're from DC, so over the years, we've just mixed with a lot of other cultures. Like my cousin just married a Korean uh, woman, and we have Hispanic, Jewish, African American. Like we, we've just become such a multicultural family. And so, um, I was attending a lot of these weddings, and I was like, I, I, you know, this is—it's so beautiful when you see love transcend cultural, religious, tribal boundaries. Um, and so I started enlisting a lot of stories from my cousins um, and their experiences in bicultural relationships. Um, and then I also cast Tara, and once I found Tara, because I was looking for this girl for years, like I was looking for my lead, and I finally found Tara, and she did a reading of it, and, and it felt like the right person and she also I went and saw her play Mahmoud and I, I found in, in her play that she was speaking to the same issues that the movie was speaking to um, so I felt a kind of kinship and um, and so we started I cast her and then we I started enlisting a lot of Tara's stories um, her experience with Persian parents and relationships and so the character sort of evolved into kind of Tara <laughs> and so I feel like it's kind of a mishmash of like yeah, us <laughs> the character so it's a, yeah, I'd say it's a combination of like me, a lot of Persian women that I, I collected their stories and Tara. And uh, so it led us to this character, Nusha Husseini. Um, so yeah, it just kind of started as like, as just really personal, of just wanting to tell my story, a lot of Iranian, modern Iranian women, women who are, you know, navigating love um, in the modern age in cities like Los Angeles and New York um, and DC. 
and Toronto. And um, so, yeah, it just came from representing my experience. It's amazing. Um, so what were the challenges that you had uh, while directing this movie as opposed to your previous projects? Uh, this was the debut feature for you. Yeah, I mean, getting financing for a feature is, you know, I had made a lot of short films. Um, but that hardly prepares you for the challenge of, of getting support and funding for a feature because you need much more. Um, and I took the script around to studios in Hollywood. And, um, you know, this was, I was shopping the script around before diversity became cool and it became like a hot button top topic. And so a lot of the studios were like, we love it, it's so funny, but it's just too niche. Mm. Um, and it's, you know, an Iranian woman, an Iranian family. It was just like, it felt too specific to them. Um, so we ended up making the movie outside of Hollywood, independently with private equity. And um, it was really like a, like a grassroots, um, just like a passion project. And all of my cast, I managed to pull off a great cast because they all believed in the story and they felt like it was something that should be told. Um, and so they all helped out Shohar Agdashlu, Maz Jabrani, Rita Wilson, everyone just sort of, you know, came um, because they believed in the, in the story. Um, and so we all just kind of, we did it together and it literally it's like, it's really being held up by scotch tape. Like it's, <laughs> it's like we Don't just, tell them that. yeah, no, but I think that's, I think that's important because it's like you don't need a lot to tell a great story, but if we could even have more, there's even more stories like this that should be told. Um, and, and just seeing fa new faces on the screen is so important and there's so many, so much more where that came from. Yeah, I can definitely see the emotional connection with the, with yeah. the movie for you guys. So how's the reception been? Uh, both in here and maybe in Iran, has people... Amazing, yeah, I, it surprised us. We just opened to like a great opening weekend. Um, my distributor, Blue Fox Entertainment, they released the movie in theaters and online the same day. Um, so, you know, but despite the fact that it was released on iTunes and Amazon, people were still turning up in the theaters. Um, and now we've got an extended run, we're expanding to new cities, um, and I think the reason people are turning up in the theaters is because they, they, they don't get, they're an underserved audience, you know, and they want to see themselves represented, and so they, they like to come out to the theaters and watch the movie together and laugh, and um, so it's been surprising um, turnout. Um, and. Um, it's just it's been really touching to just really fulfilling and we're really touched by the response um, especially by young Iranians young female first generation immigrants like that that feel like they can connect to the story in their own with their own emotional associations they you know even like I've, I've had so many like Mexican Americans Ethiopians who are like who are in cross-cultural relationships and who, who are like, that's just like my Ethiopian dad or my, my Jewish mother, or, you know. So I think it really transcends uh, the Iranian culture. It really does speak to a larger experience of being a first-generation um, young person who's pulled into two different cultural directions and value systems. And inside Iran, the movie's been bootlegged. And everyone in Iran has seen it. I literally get a me <laughs> like a message every two hours <laughs> saying, I saw your movie and why is aren't there Persian subtitles? And I'm like, because you're watching it illegally. <laughs> they don't get it. They're like, wait, why are you saying it's not in Iran? It's online. I'm like, it's illegal. <laughs> every, my cousins are like, we just did a screening with like all of our friends. It's great. And this was before it was released in the US. So somehow they it. hacked. I don't know. I don't know how they got it, but um, it's been so that Google, response. Can you stop it, please. Yeah, <laughs> Google, please stop the pirating. Google. It's out there. But in a way, it's great because it's like it's not like it's going to be released in Iran anyway, you know. So it's like I'm really glad that young people in Iran are seeing it and identifying with it, and you know they're saying that it's 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 like a new perspective, and they just they love it. Like it's been so heartwarming their response and just like they're just like we haven't seen a funny movie like this in so long and you know I think it's it's been really incredible the response really especially have. from inside Iran the young people any funny stories the movie the the production it was an indie movie so it I guess a lot, of, a lot of I mean work honestly you know, people ask me that all the time sorry to interrupt honestly we worked so hard it wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we had there was a there was a lot of love on the set. 
like the cast really loved each other. Rita Maz, Rita and Maz Jabrani are like friends now. Like they had such a great rapport. Shohret, Shohret and Rita are friends. Um, and so they wanted to do a movie together and that's how I got the two of them because they actually are, are, have been friends for a long time and have had the same agent for many years. And um, so there was a lot of love um, on, on set, um, but it was a very scrappy production because we just didn't have a lot of resources. So we had to move really fast and everyone was really focused. Um, I think we were shooting like 10 to 12 pages a day, which is like... I was there from 6 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock <laughs> at night every day. Oh. And I was in every single scene. Yeah. And I was basically just like a lunatic. Running around. <laughs> and sure, actually, June would say to me, Tara, sit down. <laughs> Go sit down. And I was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was so, I mean, everyone works so hard. Yeah. It really, especially Tara. She, I mean, I threw her in the ocean. I let her on <laughs> fire. Like, <laughs> we just... She was so game, and that's also part of why we got to make the movie, because like I found my person. And you know, somebody once told me, they're like, if you want to make an independent film, you have to find your one person that will be your ride or die. And that's how you'll get the movie made. And that was really Tara. And as soon as I found her, we just, we started running, and, and, and just like the energy of us together, we just kind of, we managed to get a, a bunch of people to rally around us yeah. and, and make it happen. So I just want to thank Tara. I love for, you. For thank supporting you. me and you. seeing it through with me. It's so important. So wonderful. Um, so this has been a little unorthodox because we need to let you go. I'm soon. Sorry. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, if you want to leave, we understand. Thank you. I enjoy the rides at Universal. I know that's what you're thank going you. to be doing there. I'll be at Universal for the Harry Potter ride. Yeah. Um, no. Have fun. Thank you so much for, you for letting me here. come and also oh. dip out. I'm going to talk about how you directed the movie as soon as you leave. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. You. <laughs> All right. So, Tara, in terms of questioning, I have a little bit of a chrono chronological order on, on, the, on, the, on the questions that I'm going to ask you. So the first one is the obvious one that I think everyone asks you. When did you first realize that acting is the, is the career that you have a passion for and that's, one, that, that's the direction that you want to pursue? So I, I obviously was um, carted around all over the, the world as a kid, like a lot of Iranian Iranian immigrant kids are. I went back and forth to Iran a lot, and I think that the through line of what was kind of steady and constant in my life was um, entertainment, was movies, was everything else was kind of all over the place. But um, I loved movies, and I loved Gugush, who's a really famous Iranian singer. Um, and I imitated her, and I like knew all of Greece from start to finish. And it just, it's just who I was always, and, and it was the one constant thing in my life. So when I got, and then I got to university, I got to the time where I had to go to school, and my mom was like, you want to be actor? Okay, you have to go to a school. She doesn't talk like that. Mom, I'm sorry that I imitate you like that. She doesn't talk like that, but for, for comedic effect, that's what it was like. Um, and then I studied it at the University of Toronto, and then I'm here now. Cool, that's amazing. How did studying it as, as a major, like theatrical uh, studying at the University of Toronto affected your perspective for the job versus other people who kind of get into the business but they have other degrees, they're engineers, doctors, and they just get into the business? It really like grounded my, my work. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to do such cool things. I got to do play all kinds of characters in theater. I got to learn how to create theater, how to tell stories how to be um, an engaging performer. And I mean, I don't think it made me better than anyone at all, because actually those engineers and lawyers actually have something to fall back on. I didn't. Um, so it just kind of, it just gave me, it was just a different, it was just a grounding experience. It also showed me the importance of hustle, because I really had to hustle, because as I was getting a degree, not only was I doing all the theater things. I, at the University of Toronto, you also have to like get an actual degree too. So I had to study mm -hmm. English too and social sciences too and all these things at the same time and then have rehearsal until two o'clock in the morning. And so it was crazy. But it taught me that hard work is everything in this business. It's not just art. So straight out of school, you uh, started creating Mahmoud. Yes. 
and that may be an unorthodox start to a career because people may be like taking on a character and in a smaller role versus you doing everything, wearing so many hats and creating this role from, the, from zero to 100. So how was that experience for you? Mahmoud was created during the, the Green Movement in Iran. And it's a one-woman show where I play three different characters, and um, it's all about the immigrant experience. But it takes place during the Green Movement, so it was a lot about my experience as an immigrant dealing with what's actually going on in Iran, which was really difficult for me. So it came from the need to tell that story and then turned into this kind of funny, but kind of not at all funny, um, just like show about what it is to be an immigrant. So skipping forward, um, <laughs> so, uh, a few years after, I think seven years ago, you moved to LA. Yes. Um, what motivated you to move to Los Angeles? Well, I brought Mahmoud here and it did really well. And then I signed with um, managers and agents and it just kind of snowballed into me being an LA actor. So. Cool. How's your immigration process, I mean, it's not really easy for Iranians to come to the U.S. <laughs> well, I'm Canadian, so that, that helped. I, got, I was able to get an O-1 visa, which is um, an extraordinary person's visa. Not sure why they gave it to me. Thank you, America. Um, and then I recently got married and I, and I got my green card. Okay. So that's my immigration, through marriage. Okay, congrats <laughs> on the marriage. But it's real marriage. It's not just, it was a real, <laughs> it's a real marriage. Yes. No, to USCIS, it was real. It's real. Everything was real. You approved it. <laughs> no, no backsies. Um, so you recently got married, as you yeah. said. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was that anything like the movie? No, because I married a Persian person. Oh, okay. I learned from the movie, and I married a fellow Persian person, and it was super easy, um, except that we are not very traditional at all. So we have to do this table called a, a sofre, which which ha, sofre act, which has all these symbolic things, and it's supposed to be yeah. this grand thing. And I was like, I want everything to be made of wood. And my mother-in-law was like, Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so those it was kind of things like that, you know. Yeah, it's funny. So I guess the movie was a learning experience for you as well. So you yes. didn't go that route. I didn't go that route. <laughs> uh, when was the movie shot? Actually, it was two years ago, or it was shot three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you that. Okay, you did. Yeah. We can cut it out. Well, no, it's probably okay. not. Keep it. It's the truth. Yeah. Okay. So, living in LA for the past seven years, you know, Hollywood talks a lot about diversity and inclusiveness, but, you know, reality is often very far from ideology. Yes. How has your experience been living in, the, in, in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, and looking, you know, the way you, you look, basically? Um, well, I go out for a lot of Persian parts, but I don't look Persian the way they want a Persian person to look. So they, I often lose them to people who are a little darker in complexion than I am. Um, and I did this thing called the CBS Diversity Showcase many, many years ago. It's not like this anymore. It's actually an amazing program now. But at the time, um, I kept being told that I'm Latina. Every time there was a sketch that was Persian, I was like, I. And they're like, no, you're Latina. I'm like, OK, got it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the struggle. I can never just play like someone Norm, you know, I can't play like Sally. You know what I mean? I have to play Sally who was bringing shame on her family because she's Iranian. You know what I mean? So that's kind of been the struggle. No matter, and, and because I speak English well and I speak Persian pretty well, it's like confusing to people. They don't know where to put me. So if I didn't speak Persian, they'd be like, okay, she can do everything, you know? But because I do, they're like, oh, she's Persian, but she doesn't, we can't really sell her as Persian. Like, can you get a tan? I was actually told by a manager, not my current manager, that I should spray tan really dark all the time. No joke, D dye your hair dark and spray tan so you look more Persian. Well, it seems to be working in the politics. Anyway, consider having a tan. Yeah, I should consider it. Thank you, thank you for your <laughs> acting advice. All right. <laughs> Google's great, all the information available to you. <laughs> yes, asking questions from us is basically Googling. This is great, this is that. really cool. Yeah. So um, I guess finding uh, parts have been a little bit difficult, and that's yeah. what kind of uh, inspired you to do the skits and the one-off shows that you did. Exactly, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how these two, very funny, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go watch it on YouTube. They're wonderful. Thank uh, you. And how did they come, come about, and how did you find the, the actors in it and the ideas? 
Um, I, I have a friend, his name's Shion Ebrahim, he's a, an amazing filmmaker, and we just started talking and I really wanted to make a funny sketch, because I was bored, because I wasn't booking anything, because I'm not Persian enough. Thank you. Um, and then, so I started writing with him and we created um, Persian makeover with Manija as like a, a Marie Kondo um, spoof. And then that kind of exploded. And then, and it's all just my friends. It's shot, the first one was shot at my house. Oh. And they're all just my friends that came over one afternoon and we just shot it. It wasn't anything like spectacular. And then it did really well. So then we're like, what are we gonna do for the second one? And then we managed to get this mansion through my friend Bita Milanian, who had other friends who were really generous. And then we got Andy, who's a superstar Persian singer. You know Andy. And we got all these amazing people. Maz, who was in A Simple Wedding, came and did it. Everyone was just like, yeah, we'll come for an afternoon and do this. I'm like, OK. So we did it. It was just through the support of my friends. and So cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So, and you put it up on YouTube. And then I put it on YouTube. Thank you, Google. All right. What and you, uh, yeah. It, what, what, do you it think about, what do you think about technology, YouTube, and how has that helped you in your career at all? Yeah, obviously. It's okay. like incredible. It's like, it's, you can just oh, yeah. put it up. Yeah. And they pay you, hopefully, one day. <laughs> Google. Yes, they will. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. That's a private conversation. <laughs> all right. So then hosting Persia's Got Talent. Yes. How did that happen? That is the coolest one, I got to say. Um, I just got a call from my manager one day, and he was like, they want you to host Persia's Got Talent. I'm like, I'm an actor. I study Shakespeare. I'm not going to host anything. And he's like, OK, but it's a really good opportunity, because this is actually the first time an Iranian company was able to get the license. This is a real license of the, Got, of the Got Talent franchise. So I was like, uh, OK. He's like, they're shooting in Sweden. You're leaving in like three days. I'm like, what? So I went, and it was, it was something else. Like, if you watch the show, whenever the camera pans to me, I have this face. And it's genuinely me crying because the talents were so amazing and their stories were so inspiring. And it was just being thrown into these immigrant stories and they're there performing in front of these famous people that they never thought they would meet. And I get to hold their moms while they're watching them sing on stage or do acro. It was incredible. And it's such a good show. And the producers are amazing. And the talents are so good. And it's, it's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. It's wonderful. So um, I guess we can, well, before switching to the movie and talking about your experience at this movie, um, I know you have got a very, uh, you have got the talent for making impressions. Yes. And you're very funny in doing that. There's Thank a you. YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot and oh, ask no. you if, if you're willing to do an impression for the audience here today. If not, it's completely understandable. I'm not going to be as good on the spot as I am rehearsed. OK. What can I do? I mean, who do you? I can do Celine Dion, which I do in everything. You guys are going to get so bored of seeing me do Celine Dion. Should I just do it? Yes. She goes, every night in my dreams, I see you. I feel you. Let us out. I know you. <laughs> Thank you. Google me, you'll see I do that everywhere. So <laughs> she's going to sue me one day. All right. Please don't, Celine Dion. I'm, I'm sure she won't. Thanks. All right, so going to the movie, mm -hmm. um, what, was your, what was your take on the movie when you, were, when you kind of started putting the project together? What was the connection? To, I know Sara talked a little bit to that, but what was your connection with the movie and the characters of the movie? Um, growing up, I, I loved romantic comedies. I loved Julia Roberts. I loved um, Meg Ryan. And when I read her script, I was just at a reading. She just called me and was like, can you do a reading? And because I wasn't working at all, I was like, sure. So I did it. And I loved that this was a Persian romantic comedy. I just never thought I could be the lead like Julia Roberts of a romantic comedy, you know? So I didn't leave her alone. I harassed her. She didn't. She doesn't mention that because she has like taste and class. But I did not leave her alone. Every day I was like, "So, are we gonna make the movie? Like, what do you think? Like, should we make the movie?" 
Um, and we just started collaborating. And again, I believed in her so much and her vision so much. And she's so smart and she cares so much about representation that I just threw myself in with her and we did it. We just created it together. It was, it was, it was a really cool experience. Wonderful. So, did that answer your question? It did. Okay, good. Yes. I know as, as an Iranian as, or as an immigrant in general, you have to hustle a lot. Yeah. How's that been for you after you moved to LA and even before that in, in Canada? Yeah, it's just been very important to make my own work. Not to depend on someone giving me a job, but to create jobs for myself. To write things, to help produce things, just so I can make sure that I'm being represented correctly. Right. So the, that's the biggest part of the hustle. It's been, you know, creating my own work, creating my own opportunities in general. Awesome. With that, I want to open open up the floor to questions from the audience. I don't have the question fully formed, okay. but I'm really intrigued by the fact that you did a movie about a cross-cultural marriage and then decided to marry a Persian. <laughs> I just, there's got to be more to the story than that. You know, I never dated a Persian before I met my husband. Um, he laughs because Persian men have a terrible reputation. I'm kidding. Wonderful people. Um, I'm kidding. But I, I like briefly <laughs> dated, but never seriously dated a Persian person. But when I met him, there was this kind of innate kinship that I'd never had before. He grew up here. He left Iran when he was four, so he's very he's very American. Um, but there's something that that felt familiar, and and it felt um, easy, in a way that it hadn't before. So, despite only dating non Persians my whole dating career, so um, and then I married him, you know. So, yeah, it just it, it, he worked. It, I don't know if it was intentional, but he worked for me. I don't know if I'd do it again, like date a Persian again, though. <laughs> Just kidding, I love them. <laughs> That's terrible, cut that part out. <laughs> don't watch, Sean. Just kidding, he's awesome. He's really great. I didn't come here to ask questions, but- That's okay. To ask a question. Yeah. Um, so the movie that you made is definitely gonna be very um, endearing for us as Iranian Canadians. I'm also from Toronto. Yay! in a mixed marriage and so on. Really? Um, and there are a lot of cultured people, you know, that all around the world, as you said, different other backgrounds that connect to that. But there is also this politics that is very heavy on Iranians, as you know, like we are a stereotype often, the judge, even for me that I'm an Iranian and I'm, I totally understand when they, you don't pass as a, as a Persian if you just, I, I have an accent because I came to Canada later on for school. And, um, but you know, if I don't open my, my my mouth, you know, I pass as anything. <laughs> so, um, but, but then even me, I feel this prejudice as the moment you mentioned Iran. And a lot of people, especially in the US when I came here, want to imagine that Iran is a dark place with um, dark politics and, you know, and then uh, and films like that are great because it's soothing for us. But also my experience has been that a lot of people might think that huh, they are exaggerating or, you know, they, um, how do you see these films um, can open up the minds of those type of people, you know, because it's real, but also in their mind, maybe it's because people don't have direct experience. A lot of people in the world don't have direct experience with Iran and Iranian culture, so they have their, uh, fable or you yeah, know, their own kind of way of imagining it. Absolutely. How do you feel um, this movie can open doors to uh, general um, public or lay uh, public acceptance of Iranians and building, I don't know, making the path smoother for um, the world loving us, basically? Absolutely. Thank you, know you for I mean? asking that. That's a really good question. Um, and I wish I'd spoken to it more. Um, the parts that I have gone out for have been to play terrorists, terrorist wives. Because that is unfortunately, for the most part, for them, there have been other ones too, but that's, that's the, and I, and I absolutely hate that. Because politics is only a part of our culture. We are a fun loving, happy, you go to, I went to more parties in Iran than I've been anywhere else. 
I mean, my mom talks about parties during the war. She's like, there were bombs outside. We were in a basement dancing. Because, and that is the truth of our culture. We are fun loving, we are kind, we are hospitable, and we don't see that enough. And that is what this movie is. There's, there's no darkness in being Iranian in this. There's joy in it. There's the, the, there's the good parts of it. And um, that was really important to me too. That's also why I really wanted to make this movie because I was like, that, that's just, I wanna show the whole picture. You know, and, and also, sorry, also my character is an educated, she's not, the Persian word is bad bakht. We're always bad bakht. We're always like depressed and there's something terrible happening to us and everything. But she's not. She's joyful and she's just figuring herself out and fi figuring out her multinational identity. And that's my truth too. So despite the darkness of, politics, which is always there, I think it's more beneficial to us to show the light. Did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, okay. You know, like someone like Marjan, sorry, Ma um, a director like Marjan Satrapi that makes a dark comedy of, uh, yes, you know, Yeah, so Iran. good, by the uh, way. Uh, very good. Uh, but it, to me, it feels like it makes more progress in the future to, uh, in, in, among the international communities that, like, as if it, the people like to buy those kind of stuff more than uh, you know happy um, stories. Uh, so, do you think that this story will be as successful and to open doors than, for example, a I story so. of Persepolis? Yeah, I hope so. I really hope so. I mean, Persepolis was its own thing. It was it was such a, a unique the first time like that in animation and in the graphic novel. It was so beautifully told. It so beautifully told the story of the revolution from a female perspective, from a young woman's perspective, and immigration. It was just, that was its own thing, and it was brilliant. But this, hopefully, this is, I think, like you're saying, where the world needs to be going with it, and with, with their perception of Iranians. And I hope, so far, the reception has been amazing. Um, but I hope it continues. I hope more movies, I hope this inspires more movies like this to be made because we need them too. So this movie reminds me of a joke of Maz Jabani where he said, you just don't see enough people on TV just making cookies, somebody named Hassan making cookies. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm wondering like, is there anything down the pipeline? You guys gonna make another one, something on a similar genre? I hope so. I hope so. I would love to. I have so many stories that I want to tell, um, and I, I hope to have the opportunity to keep telling them. Um, but yeah, we need to show Persians just baking cookies more, for sure, exactly like you were saying. Sometimes we just bake cookies, and sometimes. we're not making anything explode. Tasty so, cookies. Too. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. <laughs> well, not if I am cooking. But. Not this guy, though. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of people who have um, immigrated to the US. My mom is actually French, so she came here when she was 20. And she still very strongly identifies as French, like obnoxiously so. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and I was wondering, since you um, were brought to uh, Canada very young, right? Um, do you identify being ca Canadian first or Iranian first, because it's uh, you were raised that way. That's strongly in your culture. Did you go back to Iran a lot when you were growing up, and so you were able to keep connected and feel like you're still connected to Iran? I consider myself Iranian first. I was born in Iran. My parents are Iranian. When I go to Iran, oh my God, guys! I didn't think I would cry, but I always cry when I say this. No, I'm not going to cry. Um, <laughs> there's something when you land. And you, and you breathe in, and it's this terrible, toxic air in Tehran. You're breathing in chemicals. But there's something even in that heaviness that feels like home, because you're born into it. And I, I don't think you ever lose that. I grew up going to Iran almost every summer, going to Tehran. And um, I never felt more love and more just all-encompassing acceptance than when I was there and with my family and with my people. 
So I'll always be Iranian first. But when I go, when I went to Iran, uh, I was also a lot more progressive than other people, and they were they would call me a foreigner, and so I never fully felt Iranian in Iran. And then in Canada, no matter what, I was Iranian. You know, I was Canadian, but I was Iranian, so I never fully felt Canadian e either. So I think. Um, having that multinational identity and identifying in both ways um, is is who I am, and and I feel actually very Canadian in America because I have a lot of viewpoints that I'm like, wait, what? What do you mean healthcare is not a right? Like it just doesn't didn't compute, you know? So um, yeah, I have a very multinational identity. But having said that, I'll always be Iranian first, no matter where I am. So. Yeah, I even have pomegranates tattooed on my arm. Oh. Guys, that's for my grandma and my grandpa in Iran. They died last year, so, yeah. I am not as attached to Iran anyway, but uh, now that you are, do you feel like the more progress and fame you bring uh, to the world, can you go back to visit just normal? Do you, I haven't. Have you ever had this fear? Because I do. I've, I haven't been able to visit since uh, I wrote Mahmoud. It just was scary because I it was during the green movement and I was doing a lot of interviews about it and it's everything we do is innately political so there's a very political streak through it and and then after that I kept doing different things and hanging out with the wrong people that so I haven't been back I haven't been back in ten years I miss both my grandparents' funerals I haven't I hadn't seen my dad in seven years um, until I met up with him in Dubai I feel very much exiled. And now doing all the other th the work that I'm doing, um, yeah, it was it's very that was the hardest thing for me is realizing I probably can't go home. Um, but I had a professor and an incredible uh, collaborator in Canada who said to me, "If you don't use your voice, you should have stayed in Iran. So you have to use your voice because you have a voice and they don't." So. So I, I don't regret it, but it's 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 also heartbreaking. Like when I say I, I have to like really swallow the bulks, the the tears, the pain of it. Since we have a couple of Toronto people in the audience, Woo. Um, <laughs> question is Toronto is very very diverse. Yeah. Uh, coming here, um, I've noticed differences. Is there anything that you've tried to bring from Toronto over here? I think one thing that I love about Toronto is that everybody gets to kind of have their own culture, you know? It's not like a melting pot like America is. Everybody kind of does their own thing and they kind of grow up side by side. But I want to say something about LA, which I think is better than Toronto. Sorry, very controversial. Um, is that LA is more somehow, I don't know, somehow the Iranians are more connected because there's so many of us. So I actually feel more connected to the Iranian community here than I ever did in Toronto. And um, I found in recent years that Canada is actually, can actually also be racist. And I grew up thinking that we're not racist, but then I look back and I'm like, oh, that racism was just like under the skin racism. And here, at least, it's like out in the open if someone's racist. So I appreciate that about LA. You know what I mean? But I think no, he doesn't know. What he disagrees. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I love I love Toronto, and I miss Toronto all the time. Um, but Toronto wasn't a place for me to grow. You know? So I I bring my um, inclusive mentality from Toronto and the fact that I, I love all kinds of cultures and I and I and like all kinds of different types of diversity like the LGBTQ community like all that stuff like I grew up just thinking that like I remember when gay marriage was a thing and I was I was like what do you mean it's a thing there are two people they want to get married who cares because that's the school system I grew up in that's what I learned at school you know so I appreciate that about Toronto. But I also appreciate a lot of things about LA too. We can talk about that later privately. So Raptors fan or Lakers fan? Oh, I'm a Raptors fan, but I'm a Lakers fan. Because <laughs> have you seen the Lakers lately? Do you know what I mean? So Sarah, Sarah said she set you on fire. She on did set. set me on fire on set. Yeah, that's true. What was that like? I had a stunt double, okay. so she was really set on fire, but I was kind of half on fire, and then uh, they threw me in the pool. That's real. So I was wearing this super heavy, frilly wedding dress in the pool, 
and I was like making eye contact with the safety coordinator, like I think I'm actually drowning. <laughs> the camera's running. I'm like, I think I'm actually drowning. I think I'm actually gonna die. Um, but it was it was really fun. And then she also we, there's a surfing scene, mm -hmm. and she's like, okay, Targ, you're just gonna you're gonna go to the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Okay, so I went to the middle of the ocean. I just, whenever she said jump, I said how high. So yeah, she, it was fun. It was really fun. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, and I think that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much Thank for coming Thank you, today. thanks for coming, guys. Thank you, we have to talk about Toronto. That's, okay.